Hi, I'm Imogen Lamport from Inside Out Style, coming to answer your colour and style questions from my lucky dip. The challenge is reinventing my style without completely replacing my wardrobe for a distinctly new phase in my life. I'm moving from the corporate world to going back to university as a very mature age student, wherein I feel comfortable and self-expressive without either standing out to yourself consciously so the clothes are wearing me or entirely effacing myself so boring tees and jeans and I know this is a very different environment going into that very casual university environment back to being a student after having been in the corporate world they are two very different uh, kinds of you know places and uh, and dress codes the thing is I think this is where defining your personal style is the first thing you want to do because if you don't know who you are and how you want to express yourself, it's very hard to take that information. Like a style recipe is a key touchstone. It really is because what you'll find is when you take that style recipe, your style recipe should work for your entire life, not just my work life or my home life or my student life. Uh, so it is looking at what is my style recipe? What is a style recipe that works for the whole of me? That's when you know, when you've got the style recipe that works for the whole of you, that's when you know you've really nailed it. Um, so thinking about what is a style recipe that works for you as a whole and then going, okay, well, I just need to adapt my more corporate clothes to a more casual look, but it still is a representation of my style recipe. So I'd recommend doing some work on your style recipe, working out what it is for you, particularly going forwards. It is something that we do want to reassess every year or two um, because, you know, things change, lifestyles change, all those sorts of things. And style recipes change as well. Your kind of where you are in your style journey changes, what you're really into changes. Um, and I do remember the, the late and wonderful Brenda Kinsell. She would often talk about that she was currently, in fact, just before she passed, she was actually in a process of reassessing her style recipe. And I imagine her website's still there, that she was talking about how she was doing it. Um, but I do remember many over many years, she'd just talk about, you know, I'm reassessing my style recipe because I've noticed something new has come into my life that I'm really appreciating and I'm wanting more of. Um, and... And so that can be something that's really important to grasp. As you're feeling, you know, I'm feeling that I, I want a little bit more of. I know that the word glamorous has appeared a little bit more in my style recipe. I wouldn't say I'm overly glamorous. <laughs> it's not my kind of dressing style. But just feeling like there's a bit of swish, you know, swoosh in my outfits or a little bit more glamour in my outfits um, is something that I've noticed in the last year or so. And that's something that, you know, you can... It just is kind of, you might find that there's tweaking changes as you go through your life. So I'd say, figure out your style recipe and then see how you can then create casual outfits that still represent who you are out of the clothes you already have. Um, it's like, don't wear the whole suit. But you know, the thing is, particularly as a mature age student, the young students aren't expecting you to dress like them. I mean, this is one of those things. It's like, we often think I have to dress the same as everybody I'm going to be mixing with, and you don't. Uh, it's a bit like I might go to the bank in a pair of shorts and a t-shirt, but I do not want my bank manager to be wearing that um, because I expect my bank manager or my bank you know, person I'm going to see to be dressed more conservatively and in a professional attire. So just, you know, so this whole thing of I could dress like your clients or dress like the people you're around is not necessarily true or the best advice depending on what you're doing and nobody expects a very mature age student to dress in the same way as a 19 or 20 year old is dressing uh, so don't worry too much about that but you could think about well what makes me comfortable maybe if uh maybe if uh you are bringing in say uh you know you're you've got some jackets or something but you can wear those with your jeans and that could be it's a very smart way it's adding those jackets that you had from your corporate life into the jeans now if you had some kind of corporate suits and pencil skirts maybe the pencil skirts won't work so well but maybe there's a way you can use them depending if they're in colors or depending what they're like that there might be ways you can use those garments thinking about mixing them up so mixing those levels of refinement so going i'm taking my higher level of refinement and i'm adding something a bit lower and that's looking at the accessories and looking how everything you put together so suddenly that that 
ex corporate world piece of clothing no longer appears so corporate world so it is thinking about how you can play with that and I do have some blog posts about kind of mixing levels of refinement and also even um, you know kind of dressing up dressing down all those sorts of things that it could be worth looking at but I'd say the number one tip would be to go reassess your style recipe and figure out what it is that you, you know how you want to be perceived um, so that you are still expressing you uh, and that you're not you know just dress, wearing the, the whole corporate uniform to the new university environment because I think that that is um, something that is you know going to be important for you to feel comfortable in this new environment as well and also to be able to communicate with people and make friends and all that sort of stuff. Now, Sue said, I noticed a little comment just come up. Sue said, let's talk about glamour. What is it about glamour that you would like to talk about? I love a bit of glamour. <laughs> uh, you know, and it's one of those things that when I think about that word, and the thing with any style recipe is it's what does that word mean to you? Uh, it's your own interpretation of it uh, that is really important. It's not your... You know, it doesn't have to be a dictionary definition. It doesn't have to be somebody else's. It's what it really means to you and how you'd express that in your own style. Um, and so for me, glamour can mean, you know, like a bit of swoosh, a bit of kind of like flair or something, a bit of like fabric movement. Or it can also mean for me, some part of it's been pattern, adding more pattern in. Um it can mean big pieces of jewellery. <laughs> like there's lots of different things it can mean. Um, but for me, a part of it was going rather than, you know, I tend to wear much more fitted and go, you know, I want things with a bit more flow to them. And that for me felt a bit glamorous. So Sue saying fur, feathers and flowers. So yeah, absolutely fur. I always find fur, there's definitely a feeling of glamour. Um, feathers too, because they've got that as well. And flowers and sparkle. Yeah, got to love a bit of sparkle. <laughs> as well so it's thinking about how can you add those elements if that is something that's important to you um, and making sure it's in every single outfit so even when you're really casual so i've got a really casual t-shirt super casual uh, but it's got crazy whippet lady written across the front in pink glitter so even though it's super casual it's got that glamorous sparkle uh, and it doesn't look like I'm trying to wear evening wear in the daytime uh, so it can even be looking for those little details that add in you know those little parts of you that little expression of you that you are looking for in your star recipe so I think you know, Star Recipe is such a useful tool. If you have not got one, um, then I, I would recommend, and it's one of those things, it will change, but just start with something and start trying it on. Use it as a touchstone when you go shopping. Use it as something that will help you make better decisions. Use it as a touchstone when you're creating, creating outfits every day. Um, and then if it's not quite working, then start tweaking it. Or if you just feel like, you know, I'm missing this thing, um, there's something I'm missing. Well, that's when you can reassess it and bring a different word in, lose a word. It doesn't necessarily have to be the things you automatically do. Um, that if you, you know, it's a bit like Jill Chivers has said, she doesn't need to have leopard print in her, um, in her style recipe because leopard print is a given. It's the other things that she wants in it that she has to be reminded of. Uh, so... So, you know, so it is that sort of thing. So it's like, it could be that if you are always, like you're going, yeah, I like to be comfortable. But if I just automatically always choose comfortable clothing and comfortable fabrics and comfortable shoes, I don't need to have comfortable in my style recipe because it's a given. But what I might need to be reminded of, which is why I have my style recipe, might be add that touch of glamour or add that touch of individuality or whatever it is that is in your style recipe that that you might need to be reminded of so you don't get into that boring or, you know, that kind of like I've lost my personality. Uh, so it's it's adding those little things in. And like, and I always think too, particularly when we are young, and I vaguely remember being young and at university, um, we might look at particularly older women and, you know, there is an expectation that you're going to be a little bit more put together. You're going to have a more exciting wardrobe. You might have better jewellery, all that sort of stuff. You've had a lifetime to build those things up. 
Uh, so the, there's no necessity for you to dress down in the way that someone who's just come out of high school may have been wearing a school uniform all their life um, and has very little in their wardrobe and they may not have had the income yet to even create themselves a wardrobe. Plus, they are still in a period of their life where they're still very much getting to learn who they are. Um, I think really until you're 25, you kind of have very little idea. You know, it's like I'm starting to get to know myself. I'm trying things on. I'm trying other things on. I'm trying to work out who I am. You are at a different stage in your life. And I think, you know, you could be an amazing role model for all those younger students who may be looking for their style. Um, and who are slopping about in their t-shirts and jeans because they feel like they just have to wear what everybody else is wearing, which I really think is, you know, something that unless it's really important to you, it's not something you actually have to take seriously. So hopefully that helps. Um, well, thank you for your questions. Please keep sending them to me. And just to let you know too, I do have a free webinar on at the moment with some tips on how to take your style from ordinary to inspired. You can find the link to register and watch it on the homepage of my blog at insideoutstyleblog.com. It's only available for a few days, so do watch it now before it disappears, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.